listening to the State of Startups with Industry Analysts. We shine a light on the interplay of startups, their ecosystem, and industry analysts in the B2B tech space. That is, real experiences from real people solving the same challenges that you're dealing with, too. You're hosted by Chris Holscher and Robin Schaefer. Enjoy this session. Hi, Robin. Good to see you again. I missed you on our first analyst interview. Yes. Chris, I'm so glad you got to meet our guest, Martin Coopinger. I had a client emergency, but I viewed the recording and can't wait to discuss it. <laughs> yeah. Well, happens in real life, right? Um, well, for our audience, um, Martin is one of the founders of uh, Coppinger Coal, um, a boutique analyst firm uh, located in uh, my homeland in Germany. And they focus on the security space um, and specifically on identity management. And I think Martin is a great example um, how a top analyst, really top name in the industry, is highly interested in startups and their, you know, and their challenging of the status quo, really. Yeah. And here's what stood out to me when I listened to the recording. One, how intensely investors and VCs are using analysts and that serial entrepreneurs engage analysts much more actively and earlier than first-time founders. Mm, I agree, yes. Um, and that is precisely what I observed too. But um, he also made a really interesting point in explaining why startups should engage with industry analysts even while they're still in stealth mode. So... I think that is quite amazing. So let's let's dive right in. Hey, so um, it's just um, two people on the call today, um, and I see a man who I very much hope to get on the on the call um, on on the podcast, Martin Kuppinger. We haven't spoken before, actually. I've read a lot about you. Um, you are famous in the industry. Um, but please tell our, our listeners um, who you are and uh, why possibly we're talking to you about the state of startups with industry analysts today. So first, welcome to you, Chris, and welcome to everyone listening to this podcast. I'm Martin Kuppinger. I'm um, one of the founders of Kuppinger Call Analysts. Um, we're a, still a boutique analyst company headquartered in Germany, but also with teams in the US and the UK, um, mainly focusing on, on identity, identity management and cybersecurity and a bit of the related areas like data governance and stuff like that. Um, so um, you, you've approached us with your, your survey about um, startups and industry analysts. And I think this is an interesting field and, and so, um, when we go back with some more than two decades, uh, probably close to two and a half decades um, already, then, then I've been on the other side of the fence, so to speak. I've been at one of these new economy companies, uh, which existed around the year 2000 and, and mostly disappeared. Uh, a few survived, but many disappeared. And I've been the one who was sort of also doing the, the work with the analysts. And I remember that was always a, an important discussion point. So um, do we need this? Um, can we afford this? And is it worth to spend the money? How can we leverage this, et cetera? And um, they, were, they were positive and they were um, sort of more mixed experiences at the end of the day. But um, so, so I, I've, I've been, so to speak, on both sides. And I also would dare to say that we at Kupi and Cole Analysts are uh, working quite a bit with, with with startups anyway these days, um, yeah. so so I I think I have some insight into that from from different angles. Fantastic, that's that's perfect for for the purpose um, of our conversations here. So you you mentioned already, um, Kupik and Cole is very strong in the in the security space. Um, do do you want to quickly you know? outline the, the portfolio of what people can expect at Coping and Call, what you're specializing on. Yeah, so as I said, we, we are a boutique analyst and we are focused on certain topics. That means that we tend to go very deep and very sort of granular into these topics. So 
not having just a cybersecurity market segment, but having many uh, sub-segments within cybersecurity, many sub-segments within uh, identity management. We also try to cover the, the full global market. So the American markets, the EMEA markets, um, the Asia Pacific markets, um, all of them. Um, being European, it means that we have probably a, a bit more an open ear for, for European players as well, but not only. So we are really trying to cover everyone and to, to go very deep into that. And we do the usual stuff analysts tend to do. We write research such as our leadership compass, which is the market comparison for a lot of market segments we are publishing. We do market sizing data. We do uh, events like our European Identity Conference, which runs again in May in Berlin, uh, which is the largest identity gathering in Europe. Um, we do some advisory. We don't touch any systems, but we guide customers and users through strategy and true tools choice. We'll also launch, I think, next week or the week after a new um, a new solution for, for really picking the right vendors in a certain area. We will start with passwordless authentication, and we call it KC Open Select. So sort of a, sh a short listing tool. And uh, we, we also do provide advice to different types of companies from very small to very large. Um, so in some way, the usual stuff, but very focused on uh, some specific topics. Right, right. Yeah. And um, I I went to your, to your page, of course, and just, you know, just very plainly typed in the, the word startup in, in your search field. And I got 300 something um, <laughs> results to it. And just by on, on the matter of research itself, I got around 80 or so uh, results around startups. So how do how do startups play into your firm and into your research? Yeah, so I, I think there, there are a couple of things. So the, the first thing is, and that is a question we, we get again and again, questions that might mean, um, what do we have to pay for, for doing, for briefing you? So. Um, a briefing means a vendor, we are asking a vendor to tell the vendor uh, stuff about the vendor to us. So it is something where we say, this is um, what, what we what we do and we try to do it with everyone because my understanding is as an analyst, we should provide a comprehensive overview about the market covering everyone because that is what our what the other side, our the recipients want. They, they want to understand who is in this market from very large and established to, to very small. So we, we have always an open ear for a briefing. Um, th that is the one thing. The other thing is, I think just yesterday, someone asked me, what do I have to pay for participating in your leadership compass on whatever? And I said nothing because in a leadership compass, that again is something where our goal is, our ambition is to have provide a comprehensive overview about the market. So we don't charge for that. And that means that we do a lot about startups as well. Um, surely that it is sometimes in leadership compass, but, but you, you need to raise the bar at the at, at same level for everyone. That means there are things where startups tend to be weaker. They could be very strong in innovation because they frequently do something innovative, but more one innovative thing, more depth in a certain area than press across everything which the more established vendors do. But I, I strongly believe it's important for every startup to be present because uh, spreading the name is where it starts. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very good point. Um, and in, in fact, I can only second the uh, the um, the point that you made there that uh, briefings are of course always free. And um, I tell my clients, um, you know, if, if a briefing is not free, run away, because that that is then probably not an analyst relations business model that um, is going on there. Um, it's probably something else. And you want to make sure that your, you know, your the the type of interaction that you're having is actually based in the generation of insights and that it's, it's um, a fruitful exchange for both sides. Yeah. So, there surely is the other side, you know, there are the inquiry costs. So if someone wants to squeeze out the analyst, then there's a price to pay. Um, because this is the accumulated knowledge of um, sort of decades of experience across the analysts. Um, that is a different thing. Um, but but what I think which is also important what is also important is I think that um, 
for, for startups, it's very important to have then when it comes to paying that they have some options that are not huge from the very beginning. So because as a startup, you usually need to look at every every euro you spend. Um, and that means, or every dollar you spend. And that means you need to be very conscious about what you get. And, and so we have some still some flexibility aside of the subscriptions you offer as, as everyone does, but some flexibility to also do a bit more things on a per project basis. So okay. you know what you get. Yeah, yeah. That is really interesting. Um, from the the CR research that we did, we we found that the spread of investment that startups do with, with analysts is enormous. It it starts at like zero, where people just engage in briefings and make sure that you know uh, they they teach the the analyst um community about what they're doing. And of course, in these conversations, you do get some kind of feedback because if an analyst wants to ask a question about what you're doing there, wants to clarify something, they will have to frame that question. So in that alone, that that framing and the way how they ask the question, how they explain, that gives you some level of insight already. So um, it starts at kind of zero invest and goes all the way up to way, way above 100,000 per, per year, depending, of course, on the maturity of the startup. Yeah. But the point is not so much the level, the point is the development. You know, that um, a startup uh, that is maybe six months old or, or a year old, they will be comfortable with, um, you know, a, a much lesser investment because they need to, you know, test the waters and see how it plays out for them and yeah. demonstrate the value to their investors and everything. Um, and on that note, um, how, how do you see the, the relationship um, with the investor and accelerator firm um, side of, of, of the entire ecosystem? What's your experience on that end? So we're working um, quite quite regularly with um, investors nowadays. Um, that, that includes a lot of things. Sometimes they just reach out with a with a question. They sometimes want to read the research. They sometimes come up with a bit of smaller projects that also sometimes is that we we are involved in a in a commercial due diligence as sort of the the subject matter expert, so usually led by a large um, firm in that space, a specialist, but us sort of supporting them with market sizing data with our insights into the market. So um, these are things we do where we have regular conversations with quite a number of investor investors nowadays. And um, I think that that is, that is part of it because um, I, I think investors also understand very well the role of analysts in this market and, and the value they can, can bring. I think for and you pointed out, I think very correctly, I think when you're a startup, you need to understand, you need to test the water and, and what is the value of that? How does it work? Uh, we also see that the people who are sort of um, sort of serial entrepreneurs are usually way, way more active with analysts from the very beginning. Uh, when you do it the first time, it, it's, a, it's a bit different. Um, but but even then, it's it's a bit about the engagement models. So I, I have also a strong belief that is, um, in in a, in a sort of a on the, on the mid and long term, I will, and we as Cooper Call Analysts will benefit more when we um, build a long term good relationship with a customer um, that grows with the customer than whatever trying to squeeze out every 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 euro we can get. Uh, in the first year. Yeah, well, that's a very interesting point that you made there that, uh, about the serial entrepreneurs. Because one, one thing that I heard over and over again is that everybody only sees startups um, at the stage that they are. And they think, well, you have to look at the maturity of the company to um, think about whether analyst relations uh, and working with analysts is a viable model for them already or whether they're open to this already. Um, but that is actually not the right perspective. It's much more about the people who run the startup, whether they have the experience. And they may be, you know, 54 years old and have, you know, worked in 20 different companies already and have been exposed to industry analysts for like 20 years, even although the startup that they are working at right now is maybe just six and a half months old. So yeah. um, they may be, as individuals, ve be very experienced with analyst relations and know very well what the value is all about, although the company yeah. is much younger. Yeah, but but I, I believe that working with analysts at every station for everyone can 
provide value. I think there are so many, many smart colleagues in this industry, um, which can provide so much feedback on, on, on different aspects. They understand, analysts tend to understand the markets and the competition and what has worked well in, in the market and whatnot. They have been, many of these being in, in this market for long, they have a, a lot of experience and, and, and sort of what resonates with them. If it resonates well with an analyst, uh, I think chances are good that it resonates well with the market. Um, they also have usually a good understanding about which types of licensing models work and not. So a lot of my conversations with vendors actually are about what is the right licensing model? Is this a licensing, valid licensing model? Or the other thing, um, testing the message. So is our, our story, the way we tell our story, correct? And I think analysts with all their experience are, are very good counterparts. And so I think for, for every company, this is important. And I think the, even the first briefing can, can help you a lot. So if the analyst looks puzzled after 15 minutes, and, and appears not, still not to understand where you as a startup position yourself, then you probably have to, to work a bit on your storytelling. And, and I've experienced this quite, quite, quite a couple of times. Yes, yes. Well, one, one, um, one feedback or one um, concern that I sometimes get from startups is that they think, well, these analysts who are looking mostly at the large companies as they think, they will not understand my super innovative approach anyway, because they're so backwards or they're so fixed in their existing categories or whatever, and I'm creating all this new category, and they will not understand what I'm talking about anyway. Yeah, but this, I'm creating this new category. That's a dangerous thing. You know, um, I, I, I think you startup must be very careful with creating a new category. Um, because not only the analyst must understand it, but the market must understand it. So that is always one, a discussion. So is it better to, to, to use a new term or to position a startup under sort of an existing term into an existing segment, but differentiate? And this differentiation then must be very easy to understand. If the differentiation comes after 50 minutes through some geeky technical details, then it's difficult to win. So you always need to think in elevator pitches and for, 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 for small elevators, so to speak. So after whatever 30 seconds, 40 seconds, whatever, you should be done with explaining what makes you different and, and have attracted the interest. And then you, you can position yourself um, it, to create a new segment, to, to position yourself as a totally new message to the market that requires some good funding, I believe. Right, yeah, yeah, I love that. To, to your point, I think analysts love new ideas because um, we hear a lot of things which are, you, you know, when you talk with vendors in very established market segments, then that always sounds a bit the same. And if then something new appears, this is attractive. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, that, that's the feedback that I get all the time as well, yes. Um, um, it was actually a very nice data point in, in the CEO research that Alice said, the reason for me to, to speak with startups is very much to challenge my existing beliefs. And I, yeah. I, I like that because that was almost like, you know, um, a kind of bonding between you know nerds on the startup side and nerds on the on the analyst side. You know, we're all about this thing that we're so fascinated about. Yeah. So I want to challenge my beliefs. And, um, and I think that, that is that is important for analysts um, because um, some of these innovations, not not all innovations, but some of these innovations are things that help overcoming things that don't work well. In the industry, so especially I think it's it's especially interesting when 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 you see a certain field where um, in a relatively short period a lot of startups pop up. So I've seen this just recently around software supply chain security and a sort of secure development life cycles, where really several startups then um, 
k out of their stealth mode. And that also means that there is a demand, there is a problem that needs to be solved. And usually then it takes a while because everyone tackles, tackles the challenge from a bit of a different direction. So then until the market matures and consolidates, this, this will take a while. Some of the larger players will also enter the market, some will acquire, some will expand their own capabilities they may, may have. But this is what really makes it interesting, way more interesting than uh, having a very mature market segment with uh, little change. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I, I'm conscious we, we have a hard stop because you need to um, rush to another um, meeting again. I just want uh, to make sure we get to um, a few questions here. So what you, you, you mentioned stealth mode. At, at what point in, 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 the, in the maturity of a, of a startup do you think um, would be a good point to reach out to analysts? Is it is it like Series A funding? Is it when you're still in beta mode? Is it you know at, at, at what point in that journey? I recommend doing it when you're still in stealth mode, wow. because you can learn from the analysts. That you can you know who who is the one you can run the message against to prove it aside of your investor and maybe a a, a few friends. Who is the one? There are not many, and. Analysts are, are used to deal appropriately with information they receive confidentially. So okay. analysts are, are well suited for that. And they can help you even to, to, to work on your message and maybe even some collaterals uh, for you going live. So start early. Yeah. Okay. Great. That, that's great advice, I think. Um, because it also it, it changes the perspective of startups. You know, it's ma many that I talk to think of analysts as another channel to get their message out into the market. It's almost like a PR-ish way of approaching it. Whereas it's it's much more in in this perspective, it's much more of an extended brain that you can pull in to your company and leverage it's both. To accelerate your journey. It's both. It's I think, and I think that's the point. It's both. Yeah. So I guess that's also already um, incredible, uh, valuable advice uh, there. So on, on the other hand, what would be your one big wish from the analyst uh, community if you if you had one? To the startup? Yeah. Yeah. So um, don't hesitate approaching us. Um, a lot of us will be very interested in talking to you and learning about you and then see how how it goes from there you know and you're not that uh, scary, for me obviously. it's always worse to invest at the time okay fantastic so um just before wrapping up this because again i i know you you you've got to run in a few minutes who should we interview next for our for our series do you have any anyone you think we should speak to oh that's a a tough question um it could be another analyst, ideally outside your own house, <laughs> yeah. or it could be could be um, a VC or accelerator firm. Maybe um, maybe, maybe you, tr you you reach out to Mike Neuenschwander. He has been an analyst. He has been and is a, uh, currently again at a startup. Okay. So he has really a lot of experience from both sides. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. I'll I'll speak to um to Linda um to to make sure I get the name right and everything. Okay, great. Thank you. Fantastic. That was that was um, a very rich conversation. Thank you so much for being on the show, Martin. Um, thank you for inviting me. And thank you for everyone listening. Thanks. Have a great day, Martin. Speak soon. Hey, that was super interesting. Great stuff came out of this interview, don't you think? I yes. loved his answer about when a startup should reach out to an analyst, and he said, when they are still in stealth mode, which is contrary to what I find most startups think. So first, they think they're too small and early to be of interest to an analyst, a lot of times. And second, they think they have to have their story perfect with all the data and evidence before they reach out, and I find that really not true. Right, that, that's, I think that's when people assume that analyst relations is just a communications thing, like a special audience kind of communications? Uh, 
which would be leaving at least half the value untouched because it's both outbound and inbound. And Martin emphasized how much you can learn from analysts in these early phases. Analysts wanna know what's happening in the market and they know that innovation happens at the startup level. They really wanna learn and help. Yes, and, and this is where this, um, what we mentioned in the intro, uh, the, the serial entrepreneur um, experience comes in. Um, you know, founders who have done it before, uh, learned about analyst part of, of the B2B playing field, and they there's so much more consequently pushing for early and strategic um, analyst engagement. Um, I believe it was Sierra Ventures who advised precisely that. Start analyst engagement early and practice it strategically. So glad that Martin um, uh, raised that point, um, because I think the earlier you, you amplify the value of your best people um, and your best thinking, the greater is, of course, the effect that you're getting along the way. And it's it's probably one of the, the most important investments um, that, as a startup, you, you can ever make. Yeah, I, I agree with him. And he, he actually confronted people's belief that briefings and report participation costs money. Which is which is just nonsense. You know, pe people uh, people's belief that, that briefings um, cost money, um, at, at least when, when you're talking to actual analysts and not a marketing agency, that's only, what do you call that, only masquerading as an analyst? Right, um, right, right, exactly. There's never a cost to brief an analyst or be featured in a report. Right. Analysts need to hear from startups to be able to cover the entire market. It's what defines their value to their audience. And their audience are your buying customers. Yeah, right. No, I, I think no, no analyst. I think you said this um, earlier, um, Robin. Um, you know, a while ago when we talked, no analyst earns their reputation by by knowing what IBM does. It's it's of course that is important, and it is of course expected because they are relevant, and and large established uh, vendors may in fact score highly for their breadth of capabilities. Sometimes also because of their depth of capabilities, certainly. But Martin, um, he pointed out that startups can be sort of the spark that catapults an entire market into a new level by, by solving a long existing um, challenge. And this visibility is exactly what startups need because that's exactly what they do. They challenge the status quo, you know? They, so they need to demonstrate the um, disruptive value of their propositions. And and thereby also not just boost their own, you know, uh, journey, but also their their value to investors and all yeah. that part. Yeah, that's well put. Um, so I really appreciated Martin's understanding of the reality of startup budgets. That Coopinger tailors the cost of their advisory appropriately to startups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I think that is what we really need in the industry. Um, he, he mentioned um, startup tailored subscriptions and also um, sort of pay-per-use models. Mm -hmm. I think there's there's a lot of, um, you know, thinking to be done there to, to bring the two together better. Mm -hmm. So paper interaction, um, I think he called it. So that allows the startups to go ahead on a very purpose-driven way which I think is spot on. Yeah, uh, of course. And I'm always clarifying that when an analyst shares their detailed knowledge with a vendor, and that's a large or small vendor, that value comes at a cost. But Martin said he wants to give that, he wants to give that knowledge to startups because he knows how impactful it can be. So he gives some consideration. And this feels like the right way for analyst firms to look at this. Right. And he mentioned very specifically, uh, they want long-term relationships. They they are aware of the growth journey of startups. So KC, I mean, Kupinger Cole, um, they balance the value of learning from a startup with a more um with a more affordable startup offering that they that they give. Which is, by the way, if you remember that, um exactly what what Tom Pace. Um, demanded on just yep. our last startup interview, remember? Yes, 
Yes. So here is one analyst firm, and not just any analyst firm. This is, you know, a, a, a key player in the field that is already clearly in line with, with what yeah. uh, Tom has demanded and what we've heard elsewhere. So this is really key. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I got a last point. I found it really interesting what he said about investors. Yes, yes. So you mentioned Sierra Ventures earlier. And we also had a, a, an interview with venture studio, York IE. And we know that analysts help investors every day. And Martin gave us good insights into specifically how investors use them. Right. Um, investors need to evaluate and, and, and qualify and basically seek to de-risk their engagements. Yeah, that's what they use analyst research for. Like they, they get market sizing and trends, but they also do inquiry on specific questions and their due diligence, like product market fit and competitive positioning. And that that demonstrates just how critical, if you think about it, how critical and game changing it can be for you as a startup to be known and and best understood by by the most relevant IAs in your in your segment. Um, when when think of it this way, when when a VC inquires with their um, industry analyst house of choice, um, you don't want the response to be startup who, you no. Know? <laughs> You want them to have qualified your differentiators already. You want them to be able to, you know, to to deeply um, speak about you, what, what's special about you and why they trust in you and how you're positioned and all that. Um, because that makes a difference. That makes a difference, not just on whether you get the best VC to back you, but also makes a difference very practically in your, in your, in your, in your how do you call it, in your purse. <laughs> um, to, to the cost of the capital that that you bring into your business, you know how much that how much that couple of million actually cost you, in terms of um, um, uh, how much shares you you give for that. Oh yeah, this was really helpful to me. I think startups seeking investments need to understand this dynamic, get on the analyst radar early to get better investment deals from the best investors. Yeah, it simply removes uncertainty. From, from the equation uh, for the investor. And that is what it's all about. Yeah, such a great conversation. I'm so glad you had it. So to you out there, let us know of anybody you think we should put on our list to interview. We wanna keep this series valuable and interesting to you. So we like to talk to startups, to in, uh, investors, to analysts, send them our way. Right, please reach out to, to either of us, uh, Robin or, or me. Um, our contact details, as well as Martin's, are, are in the show notes. Um, and with that, thank you so much for taking the time and, and watch our, our show. And, um, and have a great day.